I recommend, J.J. Keller makes a little book about load securement. I recommend finding that. I think it's online too. You can find all that information because uh, we could talk for hours about securement and, and everybody has their own little All right, good morning. We're, uh, we're at a rest area in Florida here on I-75. We're near uh, Dale City. We got about, um, about 12 miles to go down to where we have to uh, unload. I've already been driving uh, about 250 miles this morning, so I'm taking my 30 minute break. Uh, I did have one issue yesterday, and for you guys on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, saw that my fuel filter had clogged up and it had clogged up quickly. Uh, it went all the way up to the top rather fast. Uh, and you can see closely, you can see the fuel level down there. And when the fuel level gets to about right here is usually when I fill it. But it was all the way up at the top yesterday. That's an easy fix. Uh, I have the big wrench that goes on here and you just drain the fuel out. So it was an easy fix yesterday. Um, let's walk back here. Our coils are looking good. Tarp job's looking good, no major issues. I had one person ask me a question when I was backing up to load the, the coils, um, the little racks, and they're called coil racks, and they're two metal pieces that the wood goes down in, and you set the coil in there. Uh, I'll dig some out here one day and show you closer. I have shown them before, but uh, our tarp job's holding up pretty good. Got a little bit of flapping back here. But uh, we only got 12 more miles to go to get this unloaded. Um, we get this unloaded. I do not have a reload, so I'm not too sure what we're going to do next. Uh, Katie's working on it. It just is 8 o'clock, so everything's just starting to wake up, uh, open up in the morning. So uh, we'll see what, see what we can come up with. But I got about another 10 minutes on my break, and then uh, we'll get going. We did our break. We've actually been here 43 minutes. Uh, it is just after 8 o'clock. I talked to Katie real quick. There was a load coming up out of South Carolina going to Michigan. No, Michigan, Wisconsin, Michigan uh, for tomorrow, which is Friday. Now it's like a 400 mile bounce up to Michigan or up to uh, South Carolina to go get it. But when I come down here to Tampa, I kind of figure that into my coming down here that I'm gonna have to bounce way out of here to uh, to get up there. Now, I put my name in on it, but like I've talked about before, the way the system works at Mercer, everybody's standing in line. In 200 feet, and onto I-75 South. Katie says there's there's 15 empty trucks in front of me. I'm still loaded. Those 15 other trucks have priority over me. So those 15 guys have got to say no in order for me to get it. So the odds of that happening are probably pretty slim. But you never know. You never know. So anyway, but uh, that's kind of how it works. And you can't get mad at the system because if you were one of those 15 empty trucks, You'd want your place in line too. So, all right. Ah, uh, let's we can. Let's uh, let's make our way over there. We've got about 30 minutes over there. It's only 18 miles. We're getting ready to run through the woods for a little bit. We've got three miles up to our exit, and I'm going to run through the woods. So uh, we'll get just a little bit of footage running through the woods here, and then uh, we'll get our coils off and figure out what we're going to do. So talk in a bit. All right, we're over here where we got to unload. Um, I pulled the tarps off already. Let's take a look. Um, I don't. I haven't shown this in a while, but we'll show a little bit of how these coils are on here. So this is a coil rack, and you can see I used two of them. There's one there, and there's one there. Um, you put your wood, your dunnage, on each side of the coil rack, and then the coil sits down. Now, if you look, there's three pieces of wood in there. Because if I only put two pieces in there, the coil will sit on the trailer. 
and we don't want the coil sitting on the trailer. So I put enough dunnage to keep the coil up off the trailer, especially these little coils like this. And then got rubber mats, you gotta use rubber mats. Now some guys will put the rubber mat along this edge. Some guys run them long ways like I do. Um, and then we got our securement. Sure. And if you use the rule of each piece of securement counts as 5,000 pounds, that will keep you out of trouble. So two chains and two pieces of securement would equal 20,000 pounds. So we would be okay because we have to have, excuse me, two pieces of securement equal 10,000 pounds because you have to have enough securement for 50% of the weight of the item. That's a 20,000 pound coil. So we have to have enough securement for 10,000 pounds. Three pieces of securement is more than enough. And actually we had four, because if you remember, I had the strap going across the top. So I actually had four pieces of securement. All right, let me, uh, let me finish up. They're waiting on me. I saw the truck pull out. Let me finish up, put the stuff away and get unloaded. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. <laughs> We got our coils unloaded. Um, we don't have a reload, nothing, let me turn around. Nothing has panned out yet. Uh, we're still pretty far down the list. Uh, there was a load going to Dover, Delaware I thought about getting, but I was number 20, which means there's 20 empty guys in front of me waiting in line. So, but anyway, all right. We got our coils off unloaded. We got our racks, we got to put everything away. Let me, uh, let me crawl under here and I'll show you where I keep everything. Oh, no. Oh. So, under here, hopefully it'll show up. That box right there, where that red strap is, that box right there, that's where I keep my coil racks. And then up in the front up here, let me go up here, my wood. Oh, let's see, we'll go up here, hang on a second. Oh. I cut my wood, so it fits in between the, the rails of the trailer, so that's where I store my wood for my coil racks. So the coil racks go back there, wood up here, oh, and then, uh, here I'll show you one more thing. Right here, that's where I store my big edge protectors, is right there. And then, come back here, in the box. So I keep my my tarps and my padding in here. Let me pull out some of these. Hang on one second. And then that's that little tarp that I use. And then that's the smoke tarp. But I was trying to show you guys. Hang on a second. Is there's my rubber matting that goes on the on the coils right there. So all of that stuff, the rubber mats will fit in there, the tarp fits in there, all the padding fits in there, and everything goes in there. So we're just waiting 
or not waiting, but we're going to put our equipment away. Uh, Katie says pull to go ahead and start heading north a little bit, but um, we don't know. There's been stuff hitting right around Tampa area, so I don't want to get too far away from Tampa. But she says we'll make a command decision after lunch. All right, let me put this stuff away and talk to you guys in a bit. All right, it's the end of the day. Uh, we're in Mariana, Florida at the uh, pilot truck stop. And the pilot truck stop butts up right up against Walmart right there. So Walmart is across the street. But we are in the pilot truck stop. There's a truck right there. So we're not on Walmart property. Um, we did not get anything decent out of Florida. So instead of staying down in Florida hoping for something, I went ahead and took a load out of um, Fort Polk, Louisiana, going up to uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. It loads on Saturday. Uh, but it puts me in Fort Campbell on Monday and uh, it was a big bounce. It was like 800 miles over to go get it. But uh, I've talked about, I call them deadhead credits before, where uh, as long as I've had like three or four good loads in a row where minimal deadhead. Um, but the reason I would take a long deadhead like that is it puts me back up somewhere where I need to be in a good area and I've already booked a load so we'll deliver that on Monday at Fort Campbell. I've already booked a load 60 miles away from Fort Campbell going up to Indianapolis for Monday to deliver on Indy on Tuesday. So we've already booked the load up there. So sometimes you just got to bite the bullet to get somewhere to get good. I did not want to take a chance of trying to get a load and have to sit in Florida over the weekend. I already sat for Thanksgiving so I didn't want to sit for another weekend. So I bit the bullet and we'll do a deadhead. Uh, today went pretty good, it was an easy day. I started early today. I only have 33 minutes left on my 14 hour clock for today. And it's only it's only four o'clock here, something like that. So uh, it was a pretty easy day. Um, I'll touch on the securement real quick because I, I, I think I was having a hard time explaining. So the general rule on securement that I use is for every 10,000 pounds of whatever it is, use one piece of securement. So if it weighs 30,000 pounds, use three pieces of securement plus one. And that's always been my rule. Uh, I know each piece of equipment has a different work weight uh, will. Well, I talked that about before, the working load limit. Um, but, um, if, if you use kind of a standard that every piece of a, every piece of securement is 5,000 pounds, uh, that will keep you out of trouble. So I use one piece of securement for every 10,000 pounds plus one. So if it's 40,000 pounds, I use four pieces of securement plus one. And it's just kind of a simple rule and it'll keep you out of trouble. So. Uh, you can get you there's a lot of different things you can talk about about securement and stuff like that uh i recommend jj keller makes a little book about load securement i recommend finding that i think it's online too you can find all that information because uh, we could talk for hours about securement and, and everybody has their own little technique so anyway all right that's it that's it for today uh we got to drive today's thursday we're going to drive tomorrow we got about 500 miles from right here over to Louisiana so we'll knock that out tomorrow and then uh, we load on Saturday at military base so uh, it'll work out pretty good so anyway thanks for watching talk to you later